Okay, so we're coming up on another steel heady looking spot. If I remember from my trip here in the spring, I did catch a few trout in this hole. So I'm gonna fish the spinner through here and I'm gonna tell you guys about this rod that I'm fishing, which is my all time favorite rod. I bought it at a time where its purchase was a little bit of a stretch for me. So I bought it because it is the perfect all around fishing rod for most of the American Midwest. So the rod is a St. Croix Premier, seven foot six, medium light, fast action, one piece rod. I do have one regret about this rod, which is that it is a one piece. I did that because I wanted it to have the most strength and sensitivity as possible, because I really like being able to feel the bottom and every little thing. And a one piece rod does that slightly better than two piece but it's a pain in the butt to put in a car. So if I had to do it all over again, I would definitely get the two piece. Now, the reason that I chose the seven foot six medium light is because it works very well for a large variety of fishing applications. You can use very light lures, finesse fishing for uh, panfish, for crappie, for trout, for bluegill. You can up the size of things to where you're fishing. You know, what's this rated for? Make sure I'm not exceeding the rod here with my recommendations for it. Uh, one eighth to half ounce. So you can fish pretty easily a half ounce spoon out on a pier for coho salmon or, uh, I wouldn't recommend it as a king salmon rod. However, a month ago, I was fishing in a river very much like this and managed to catch a 20 pound king salmon on a spinner two sizes larger than this and i just saw a fish rise so hopefully i catch it um now the i'm so i'm just going to go through the types of fish that i've caught on this rod uh the far and away the most number of fish that i've probably caught on it are smallmouth bass. I bought this when I lived in Iowa. I did a lot of creek fishing, so I did a ton of drop shotting for smallmouth bass, and it got to the point where I could call my shots pretty much. If I went to a spot and I didn't catch a fish on my first three cast, um, I just knew I wasn't gonna get one, but it was pretty much walk to this hole, throw your little finesse fish on your drop shot in, jiggle it twice, and if you did a good cast, you caught a fish immediately. Um, hundreds and hundreds of smallmouth bass that way in that little creek. After that, probably, probably trout, actually. I caught a lot of trout on this rod, a lot of browns, a lot of rainbows. I've caught a couple of steelhead, and I've caught a lot of coho on it, and a few king salmon. I think I've caught two king salmon on this rod. Both of them were massive fish, like 30 inch fish. I feel like the rod was a little bit, a little bit taxed trying to get those king salmon in. But, whoop. Almost had a snag there. Um, but for the steelhead, it's been fantastic. I've caught a lot of fish on it. For, for steelhead, my best combo has been a number three map spinner fish slowly in conditions just like this and i've caught a good number of steelhead nice size steelhead on that setup that same setup is exactly what i caught that king salmon on as well so um, you can use that for pike you can use that for smallmouth bass largemouth bass it's a little bit big for crappie maybe use a size one spinner for crappie but that number three map spinner with the seven foot six medium light rod it's perfect so uh, now as far as matching a reel to it because that's going to be important as well you don't want to have too large of a reel you don't want to have too small of a reel i'm using a ducket 3000 on it right now which is good for larger fish, for those smallmouth bass, for those uh, walleye, steelhead, fish of that nature. 
When I'm fishing for panfish, I switch down to a Daiwa Regal 2500 and I run six pound line on that. And then I run that to a four pound fluorocarbon leader for smaller fish. Um, or if I'm just trying to get more bites because I found that some, a lot of times steelhead will demand a lighter line. So combining it with that, now in terms of the line, I tend to use braid, 10 pound Power Pro braid to a fluorocarbon leader, uh, typically eight pounds. That's what I'm running right now. But like I said, sometimes I'll drop it down to six. Sometimes I'll drop it down to four. It just depends on what I'm fishing for. Uh, when you do that, you have to make sure you have your drag set light because you'll pop your leaders otherwise. Uh, I have been experimenting with running 25 foot of monofilament down to my fluorocarbon leader so that I get a little more stretch from the mono so I'm not breaking off as many fish on the hook sets because I get excited. Now, is that kind of counterproductive a little bit? In some sense, yes, but my reason for doing it is that I make a lot of long casts in harbors or off piers. And I really like having a minimal amount of stretch, like just the right amount of stretch for a hook set at the very end of a cast with a spoon off a pier. Because a lot of times what I'll find is there's a spot I go to, make that cast as far as I can, let the spoon flutter, pump it, let it flutter, pump it, and coho will hammer it at the very end of my ability to cast in this one particular spot. So that's my reasoning behind that. So hope that's helpful.